In a previous lesson, I showed us how to count the number of characters in a file. Now let's do something more interesting. Let's not just count the number of characters, but what characters they are. In other words, A's, B's, C's, D's, and so on. So, so on and so forth. Okay, so the program structure I want is like something from rot13.c. Let's copy that to array.c. And we'll find out why soon, because we're going to use a, do, a new data structure called an array. Okay, again, I'm going to use a very familiar program stub, but I'm going to add some new variables. An i for a for loop, a maximum that will be initialized to zero, and the array, which is called count 26. Now, what does this mean? Okay, it is saying that count is an array of ints, and you can think of count as having 20 six buckets, each one containing an int. Those buckets are numbered from 0 to 25. That's important. A lot of people assume it means 1 to 26, but it is not. It is from 0 to 25. Why would I want to do something like this? Well, I'm concerned about every single letter in the alphabet, and so there are 26 letters, so I want 25 slots that I can count in, for each, one for each letter. So the A slot would be count 0 and the Z slot will be count 25. And every single time a letter occurs, I'm going to increment the counter in that slot. Okay, so that's not too hard to write. We'll do, exa again, exactly the same program structure as before. Okay, if we have ourselves an uppercase character, then we simply want to increment the counter at this array location. Okay, so again, I said if the character is A, then A minus A is 0, and that's the 0th location, and we want to increment that by 1, so we use the plus plus operator. Now, for the lowercase characters, we simply want to do the same thing. We again want to increment the 0th counter if we've encountered a lowercase a. So we're incrementing the 0 array counter location, if we have a capital A or a little a. Similarly, we, deal, we increment count 1 if we have a capital B or a lowercase b. Okay. Now what do we do? Well, we want to print this also. So we're going to use something from the sign function that we did before. So I want this previous function, I'm going to borrow that, and it'll work like this. I'm going to pass in the character C, an int N, which we'll explain later, and an int M. And I really should change the name to something like uh, print equals, because we're going to not use a star anymore, we'll use an equal sign. That will work as following. First, we'll print out the character that we are interested in, say A. Then we'll print out a bunch of equal signs. I'll have to go into this a little more depth soon, but this is going to be scaled in a certain way. But I'll explain that as I wrote more of the code. Okay, so every single bin or every single slot or bucket in the count array is being incremented, and those numbers can get fairly large, of course, if we have a large file that we're looking at. So we're going to have to find out what the maximum count is in all these buckets, and we're going to renormalize that to the width of the screen, and that's what you're seeing here. To get the maximum in all these buckets, we go like this, for i equals 0 to i plus than 26, i plus plus, if count, if the i bucket has greater count than max, then let max equal count i. Okay, 
When it's done doing all this, Maximum will have the greatest count. In other words, the letter. It won't contain the letter with the greatest count, but it'll contain the, the greatest count of whatever letter has the greatest count. Okay. Then, for every single letter, we will want to apply that print statement we just wrote above. Print equals Okay, what are we going to do here? When i equals 0, a plus 0 is a, so we're going to pass character a to the statement. That's the character, and it will print out that character. This is the count for associated with that character. This will be how many times a occurred in the file. And we're also going to pass in the maximum that occurred over all the letters. Why do we want the maximum, which is m here? Because if we sit there and take the number of counts for a certain letter and divide by the maximum, we're guaranteed to be less than or equal to 1. And then when we multiply by width, we're guaranteed to be less than or equal to width of the screen. And note we're using integer arithmetic here. This is an integer, integer, and integer. So we will get an integer number of times that i is incremented which makes sense. We want to print e this equal sign an integer number of times. So we're taking advantage of the fact that these are integers to create to use integer arithmetic. Okay, we do need to do a few more things. When we allocated this array with 20 slick slots in it from 0 to 25, those are arbitrary memory locations and we don't know what are actually in those memory locations upon initialization. So we have to zero all that out. And the easiest way to do that would be something like this. Copy this line, count i equals 0. Okay, so we've, re we've initialized all the counter locations. We will go through all the characters in a file. We'll look and see if it's uppercase and lowercase. Increment the correct bucket. Then we will find out what the maximum bucket contains. Then we'll call print equals in order to print out a bunch of equal signs across the right to the screen. So the more frequent a letter, the more equal signs we're going to see going across the screen. Okay, let's see if I have everything and whether this compiles. Okay, no width. Well, that's correct. I don't want this. And it's now called width. And I want to set it to 80. Because that is presumably the width that you're using. And that compiled. So let's run this on Voyage of the Beagle. Okay, I should probably make the window just a little bit bigger since we have 26 letters. There we go. E is the most common letter according to this. Next most common letters are uh, T, A, O, R, S, I. And if you look on the web, you search for the relative letter frequencies in the English language, you will actually find something very similar to this, that these are in fact the most common letters. Why does that matter? Okay. This could actually help us break encryption algorithms. For example, let me recompile the old rotation 13 encryption algorithm and put it into an executable called ROT13. Now let's call this on the Voyage of the Beagle and send the output to Voyage dot ROT13 for the encrypted version. Let's take a look at that. Okay, this is the encrypted version. Now let's look at the letter frequency distribution of the encrypted version. Ah, we notice that the R is the most common letter now in the encrypted version of the file. Well, how far away is that from E? Well, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 letters away from the E. Since we would have a fairly good idea that E would be the most common letter in a normal file, this is actually telling us that the encryption algorithm used is probably ROT13.C.
or rotation 13. So what this says is that the sort of encryption algorithms that I've given you are very simple. They may have worked 2,000 years ago, but very simple frequency analyses of the letter counts in a file can tell you how a file was encrypted. Okay, let's stop the lecture there. We've learned quite a few things, and we'll wait for the next lecture.